This is another problem related to induction. In this problem, we are going to use mathematical induction to find an equation for the sum of the first n non-zero even numbers. So n is an integer. So what do we mean by the sum of the first n non-zero even numbers? Well, let's think about that. Let's look at a few examples. Specifically, what if n was 3? What are the first three non-zero even numbers? Well, those would be the numbers 2, 4, and 6. The sum of them would be 2 plus 4 plus 6. If I add this up, I would get 12. And I can write 12 as 3 times 4, which has the form of n times n plus 1, because n in this case is equal to 3. So that's one specific example of what we mean by the sum of the first n non-zero even numbers. Let's look at a few more just to see what this pattern looks like. What if n was 5? So I have to write down the first 5 non-zero even numbers. So that would be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. These are the first 5 non-zero even numbers. If you add all that up, you get 30. 30 can be written as 5 times 6, obviously, which again has the form of n times n plus 1. Let's do one more. Let's do n equals 8. We did uh, n equals 3 and 5. Those were both odd integers. Maybe it doesn't work for even integers. So let's try that out. So n equals 8. We have to sum up the first 8 even integers. If you add all these up, you get 72. 72 can be written as 8 times 9, which again looks like n times n plus 1. Because here n is 8, so it's like we have an 8 and a 9 sitting there. But in general, we can write it as n times n plus 1. So in all these cases, it looks like the pattern that we are looking for or have when we add up the first n non-zero even numbers is that we should be able to write that as n times n plus 1 for arbitrary n. That's what the pattern looks like, so that's our guess. To actually prove this now, we need to use mathematical induction to prove this. So what are we interested in proving? What we're really wanting to prove now that we see this pattern is the statement p of n. So here's our statement p, and it's a function of n for n being an integer. And it looks like what we're trying to establish is that 2 plus 4 plus 6 all the way up to 2n is equal to n times n plus 1. And again, it's 2n. If you look back over here, that top number in every case was always 2 times n. So the top point in general is the quantity 2 times little n. So this is what we want to prove, and to do this via mathematical induction, we just follow the strategy we always use for mathematical induction. The first thing we need to do is show that this was true for n equals 0. So let's let n equals 0, and let's write down then what p of 0 is. Well, when n is 0, that means I need to count up to 0, which means 0 on the left, and I need 0 to equal n times n plus 1 for the special case of n equals 0. Well, when n is 0, I have a 0 here. And when n is 0, I have a 0 here. So if I plug that in, I get 0 times the quantity 1, which is obviously 0. So I have a 0 equals 0. This checks out. So the statement p of 0 holds. That was very trivial to check. So that makes sense. Now what do I need to do? Now what I need to do for the next step of mathematical induction is I need to let n be an integer. And I need to assume that p of n is true. So we assume that we can use the relationship p of n written down right here, that this is a true statement. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to compute basically p of n plus 1. So I'm going to write down my statement, but I'm going to go up one more number n. So instead of stopping at n, I'm going to go up to n plus 1. So I've written down what this quantity is. And now I can use my assumption that Pn is, is true. If I look right here, I have P of n written down essentially. So I can use this equality in this equation to rewrite this computation as this. So I just substituted in what this quantity is equal to based on my assumption, plus 2 times n plus 1. If I multiply these out, I get an n squared plus n for the first term, plus a 2n plus 2 for the second term. I can combine like terms. I have two, some n terms sitting right there, so I can combine those into n squared plus 3n plus 2. And then I can actually factor that as n plus 1 times n plus 2. So that just factors nicely. And now, this is very clear that this is written as p of n plus 1, right? Here's my statement p of n, n times n plus 1. So p of n plus 1 is the statement p of n with all the n's replaced by n plus 1's. So I've replaced this n with an n plus 1, and I've replaced this n 
with an n plus 1 to give me an n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2. So this is in the form of p of n plus 1. So starting with this computation and using the assumption, I've shown that p of n plus 1 is also true. So by mathematical induction, we have that p of n is true for all integers n. And we are done. We have proven the statement that we wanted to establish.